In this video, I would like to give you a very brief overview of Photoshop's user interface. Uh, Photoshop is a very complex program, but in terms of doing some basic rendering and things like that, we really only have to focus on specific aspects of Photoshop. So the important thing to note if you're working in an older version is that this is CS6, it's the newest version, and it does look a little bit different than previous versions and acts a little bit differently. So first thing to note that Adobe software in general um, kind of all looks the same a little bit. So if you're working in Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign, they can be a little bit confusing. So first and foremost, you always need to take a look at the upper left hand corner. The blue PS means Photoshop. Then across the top of the screen, we see the very standard uh, menu titles, file, edit, and so on. And then we get into things that are more specific to Photoshop, dealing with image, layers, and that type of thing. So if we look at file, file of course is going to have the standard opening a new document, an existing document, and then of course closing, saving, importing, exporting, printing, and that type of thing. It's also where you can exit the program. Edit is where we're going to find things like undo and redo, which of course is critically important. Cutting, copying, pasting, transforming things, creating patterns and brushes, and other things like looking at our preferences and, and that type of thing. The next one over is image, and this is where you'll find a majority of your image editing types of things. For example, checking what mode that you happen to be in, any adjustments that you might want to do, the size of the image or the canvas that you're working on, rotating, cropping, and all of that type of thing. Layer will, of course, as the name would indicate, get into a lot of the more complicated aspects of the layers that you're working on in your image. Type is going to relate to all of the text that you might be using. Select is where we're going to select, deselect, invert, or modify in some way all of those types of selection tools that you might be using in your document. Filter will get us to those classic Photoshop filters that we've probably all seen before, but also let us do some different types of manipulations and things like that. View is one of the areas we can uh, locate zooming in and out, changing how our, our screen mode appears, turning on and off rulers and guides and things like that. Window is one of your more helpful uh, menu items for sure. And that's where you're going to locate or relocate any of the uh, different menus that we're going to be looking at over on the right side of our screen. And I'll get to that in just a second. And then of course we have help. Help is incredibly useful. Right below that, what we're seeing here is a contextual menu that changes based on the type of tool that we're using in Photoshop. The tools are all located over here on the left side in our toolbox. So this is our toolbox. This is where we're going to find you know, all of the paintbrushes, erasers, gradients, typing tools, panning, zooming in and out, our color picker. All of that type of thing is going to be over here in our toolbox. Very, very, very useful. This is essentially our, our desktop or our drawing area located here in the middle of the, of the screen. Right now we don't have an image open, so um, you know there's not an actual canvas for us to work on, but there will be in a minute. Then over on the right side, we have all of our menus that we can locate from the window button up at the top of the screen. So for example, we have the layers menu, paths, channels, adjustments, and so on. Those can all be located up here under window. And notice that the ones I have active, like layers and adjustments, have a check mark next to them. That means that they're available for me to work on. So if you inadvertently delete one or something like that, you can come in here and find it. For example, if I really wanted the colors tab open, I just come up to window, click color, and that opens it up for me. Notice that I can move these around wherever I want. 
And if I bring them over, I can kind of tuck them into place. I can shrink them or make them bigger and close them out entirely by hitting the little X in the corner. So if you, you know, accidentally get rid of one of those, don't panic. They're really, really easy to find. If you'd like to open up a new document just to see what that's like, you can go up to the word file at the top of the screen right next to the blue PS and go to new. So when you do file and new, you're opening up a completely blank document in Photoshop. It's a totally blank canvas. Here we'll see that, you know, I have some rather obscure numbers and that's just going to be based on the last document that I had or if I have a size on the clipboard of my computer. Uh, Photoshop's really handy and will keep that in its memory so it makes it really easy for me to open up a new document and paste something in there. Notice here it says width and height, we have inches available. We can actually change this to pixels if we're going to be doing something that's going to be looked at, you know, online, for example, or centimeters, millimeters, so on. Generally speaking, I like to work in inches because I tend to think in the print world, but if you're going to be doing something online, pixels would be perfectly fine. And then I can type in exactly what I'd like that measurement to be. So perhaps I will do 12 by 12 inches, which might be like a standard scrapbook size or something like that. Then down below, a very important number to keep your eye on is the resolution. So resolution of 72 would be something that would be on the internet, for example, that's very low. That means there's 72 pixels per inch. That's just not a lot. If you're going to be doing um, sometimes of rendering or artwork, something you want to be um, nice and crisp, that will not be enough. Generally, a good rule of thumb is to make it at least 300. Uh, if you want to do something, you know, even higher, like 400, 600, something like that, you definitely can. It's just going to make your file size a lot bigger. Notice if I change that back to 72, our base image size is 2.14 megabytes. If I change it to 300, I'm already up to 37, and that's without having any layers or anything like that. Now down below there we see color mode. It says RGB color. We can actually start out by working in a different color mode if you choose. You can work bitmap, grayscale, RGB, CMYK, or lab. RGB is probably the most common. It has the most colors available for us to work in uh, and that's generally where I start. CMYK is where you're going to be looking if you're going to be doing commercial printing and things like that. Um, and we can definitely convert to that layer later, but it has uh, less colors available. So once again, I generally work in RGB and switch it around if I need to later. Photoshop makes that pretty easy. I'm also going to keep that 8-bit. You do have the options to change that higher, but uh, unless you're doing something more advanced, that can cause you problems that you might not be anticipating. So 8-bit is usually a good place to be. Down below there, we have the background contents. Mine happens to say white right now. Notice that we can make it the background color, which is what's going to be down here. We have the foreground and background color, so mine would actually be white. Or we can make it transparent. So it depends what you're going to be doing. If you'd like it to be transparent, definitely choose that now. Or if you'd like to have a white background, you can do that as well. These are things that you can easily change again in the future. Then I'll say OK. And it will give me this 12 by 12 inch square canvas to work on. I happen to have the rulers up so I can actually see that from 0 to 12 here and 0 to 12 on the side. Once I have an actual canvas open, if I take a look over in the layers, I see that I have a new layer, it says background, and it's locked. So this is my new canvas to work on. If I actually want to start painting, doing things like that, it's probably going to be in my best interest to start out with a brand new layer and leave this background alone. The layers in Photoshop are really your friends and you want to use them as much as possible. If we start painting things 
um, all on the same layer, it really reduces our editing ability. So I'll be getting into that in a future video. But here we have our brand new blank canvas. And once again, if we'd like to do another one, we can do File and New, which will bring up our menu. And this time I could change it to something um, a little bit different so we can see the difference. So I did 3 by 15 inches. Okay. And now this canvas looks very, very different. You can make canvases, you know, essentially any size proportions that you want to in Photoshop. Now that I have two different files open, I see in the interface, Photoshop makes it very easy to go back and forth. I have Untitled 1, I click on that tab, Untitled 2, and I can go back and forth very easily, and the more files I open, the more I can click across the top. If I want to, for Untitled 1, for example, I can say File and Save As and already start changing that name. So instead of it be called Untitled 1, I could name this something like Demo Canvas. And when I'm working in Photoshop, generally speaking, I don't want to work in JPEG. I really want to be working in a PSD, Photoshop's native format. 